Good morning, friends. I need to raise my blinds here. They're always down. I like never think to raise them, but every once in a while, I like to have a little bit of that light come in. Okay, that's enough light. Okay. Um, so I'm just getting ready for the day. I went to stride this. It's getting cheeky on me. Excuse me. Oh, I think I hit close instead of stop. <laughs> but I'm just getting ready for the day. I just washed my face in the shower. Let me put on some toner. I'm actually gonna use the Surat Hinoki Facial Mist. I do love it, but because it comes in a stir bottle, it's just so, so easy. The other toners I use, I put on a cotton pad and I like pat it in. This is just great. I just spray it, basically does its thing, and we're good to go. And then for my next step, you guys know I usually go in with my Sislier Essential um, Skincare Lotion, but I've been using the La Mer Treatment Lotion. This is even more moisturizing. It's like an amped up version of, of this. Um, I don't know that I need this level, so I think I'm gonna just continue to use my Essential Skincare Lotion here. And for serum, I'm gonna try the brand new Clay de Pope Concentrated Brightening Serum. This is uh, definitely new, relatively new at least. I'm not sure when it came out. And I really like brightening serums in the warmer months because I feel like that's when I really need to kind of deal with pigmentation, hyperpigmentation, blotchiness, all that, all that sort of stuff. And the one that I usually go for is the Pure Bright Activating Serum from Sicily. This is wonderful. It has niacinamide in there and other things that really kind of help even out your skin tone. But since this is new, I thought I'd start trying this. So I've been using this one from Clé de Peau for like the past Three, wait, what's today? Saturday. Oh, maybe like the past five days, four or five days. And it's lovely. It has like the perfect serum texture, like a very light, uh, almost, almost lotion-y kind of texture. And now is the time that I determine whether or not I need SPF and a moisturizer or just SPF because I think I've talked about this a lot. You know, just you're putting on so many layers of stuff and once I get to this point, if I have an SPF that's really, really moisturizing, like you guys know, I love the Revive um, Soleil Superior SPF 50, I love that. I've also been loving the Clé de Peau uh, UV Protective Cream 50 Plus. This has been incredible. These all are very, very moisturizing, so I don't always necessarily feel like I need a moisturizer before and then put this on, it's, it's just too much. So I think today, I think we're feeling pretty good. My skin doesn't feel exceptionally dry, which it can, which it does often, uh, but it doesn't today. So I think I'm just gonna go in with the Clay de Peau um, Ultra Protective Cream. And this is also relatively new too. This has such a great creamy texture. Like I said, it just, it feels like you're putting um, like a cream on and it has a really light fragrance. Yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't smell like typical sunscreen but it's not overpoweringly like fragrant with something else. All right, last skincare step. Clay de Peau, um, the lip serum. This stuff is amazing too. It's got one of those metal applicator tips, which is so nice and cooling. And then the product that comes out is like a lotion. And then I am, I'm accepting the fact that spring is here. As you guys know, I love winter. I just did that. <laughs> giant sweater haul from Jenny Kane. It's already like in the 80s here in Vegas and I'm not gonna be able to wear those beautiful knits probably until next year. Um, I, I'm sure I'll squeeze it in a few mornings and evenings here and there, but generally I won't be able to wear them. So um, I do have like a spring clothing haul for you today. I'm, like there's nothing that's gonna get me more excited than like some fresh new clothes and like something to kind of like welcome in the new season. So I'm gonna finish getting ready and then uh, let me show you what I got. So like I mentioned, I did a spring fashion haul because I thought it was high time for me to accept the fact that the warmer months were coming and that I needed to get some warmer weather friendly clothing. So I'm working with Lily Silk on this portion of the video. So I got some pieces that are part of their like spring summer line. I got some pieces that were part of uh, like more of the like classics line. But anyway, I'll go through all of them and I did model them. So I'll do some um, inserts here of me modeling them. Um, but I'm keeping all of these pieces because I really, really enjoy them. So the first one is this black short sleeve silk 
uh, button front shirt and it's almost like a camp style shirt because it has uh, a boxy silhouette which I really really enjoy. I like the ease of this particular uh, top. The size I got is extra large because I wanted to make sure that it was very roomy um, and I know the Lily Silk clothing runs very true to size and you guys know I'm probably a large but I like extra large just to give me a little bit of extra room. And the detailing that I really like about this particular top is at the hem you'll probably see there's like a stitching right here. And so basically the silk is like doubled up down here. So we've got like a single layer of silk here and then a double layer of silk at the bottom. Same with the sleeves here. And it just gives the piece this nice weight and control. All of the Lily Silk um, silk fabrications are real. they have a lot of body and they're really nice. They're not like that flimsy kind of silk. So I really like them. As you guys know, I don't like that thin, flimsy kind of uh, fabrication that makes things like a little bit more clingy. It makes things look a little bit uh, sloppier, if you will, because they just kind of don't have a lot of control and a lot of body. Um, but all of the Lily Silk um, pieces have a lot of this really nice uh, weight to them uh, without making them feel too heavy or anything. So they just, yeah, they just hang beautifully. So the little details that they add, like doubling up the fabric at the bottom, just add like a really nice detail to make sure the top is like really, like hangs really, really nicely. So I really love this. As you guys know, this is a button front short sleeve black silk shirt. This is like so in my wheelhouse. So I love this piece. The second piece I got is another um, black short sleeve top, but it's more of like a t-shirt style. So it has a crew neck and it has um, short sleeves, but at the sleeves, there's like this elastic ribbing there, which I thought was really cute. And then at the sleeve inset here, it's pin tucked a little bit. So it has a little bit of like a feminine flair. And then there's like a little bit of a sporty flair with this uh, rib cuff. And then the back is closed by this like keyhole closure here at the back uh, with one button. And I love how you'll be able to wear this piece by itself because it has this really special detailing, but it would also make a really perfect piece to layer if you wanna wear it underneath a blazer or anything like that, or just like layer it underneath like a, another kind of like button front shirt or something. I just think that this is like a very versatile top. And again, it's 100% silk, but it has like a really nice body to it. I'm sure you guys can see, like it's not too flimsy. It has a really nice weight to it without being too thick. And then I decided to get like one of their basic front and front shirts. And I really liked the color of this. I'll have all the details of like sizing and color and style down below in my description box, by the way, in case I forget to mention anything. Um, but the color of this is really, um, it's like one step beyond just cream or off white. There's like a little bit more warmth to it. And I just thought it was so pretty. Doesn't that just look so pretty against the skin? So this one I got a size large, and again, I just love the weight of this. It didn't cling to me. It just has such a beautiful weight to it, and it fit beautifully. I like the length of it. It's long enough. If you want to leave it untucked, you kind of have that really chic pajama look to it. Or if you want to tuck it in, of course, if you're wearing a suit and you wear this underneath like a blazer or something, easy to do as well. And it does have two, two tucks in the back here, one here, and one here, so very simple design. Yeah, and I just love it. I love that kind of like pajama look. So this is definitely a winner and definitely a keeper for me. And then we have a piece, this is definitely part of their new spring summer collection. I could not resist the navy and white stripes. There's something about a navy and white stripe. It's just so like spring summer to me. It's so nautical. I feel like I should be yachting <laughs> with a shirt like this on. Um, so this may look similar to the cream blouse because we have, you know, kind of a typical shirt collar, button front, but this shirt is a little bit more fitted. So I have this in a size large and the cream shirt was also in a size large, but this one like fit me a little bit more closely. The sleeves were a bit of a better match because I have short arms. So the shorter sleeves really, really um, worked. And then we have like a split hem at the bottom here to kind of give it like a little bit of a casual look. And you'll probably want to leave this one untucked because we have that nice little detail there. So this is really perfect for the spring summer. And since I love navy and white stripes so much, I decided to give this dress a shot. Again, just like a perfect Michelle dress. It's basically a shirt dress. I love the cuff detailing on the short sleeves there. And then it has this sash. Of course, you can 
add your belt to it if you want instead, and it's completely button front. And I think what's so interesting about this is we have this, you know, the stripes going up and down uh, for the top, but then for the skirt part of the dress, we have some like bias panels kind of going around. So it gives the dress like a really nice kind of uh, swirly, swishy detail to it. So it's really nice and it does also have so, so important. So anyway, this is also definitely a keeper and I just, I really love it. I really love that detailing at the bottom that gives uh, the skirt a little bit more movement and a little bit more body. So those are my new in spring fashion pieces. I'm starting to get excited or I'm starting to accept the fact that the weather is gonna turn warmer and uh, it's great to have some pieces that are appropriate uh, for the weather. So I do wanna mention that Lily Silk is having a Mother's Day sale on their site as well. They do have a section for it on their site and it's perfect, perfect for gift giving. The products come in these gorgeous, gorgeous boxes or these gorgeous like cardboard envelopes. They even have inserts like these. How cool. And everything also has like ribbons on it. Sorry, I unpacked everything. So this looks like a mess, but beautiful ribbon kind of tying everything together. So it's just impeccably done. The clothing is impeccable. The packaging is impeccable. So they make for really beautiful gifts. So I did want to mention that. I do also have a coupon code. I'll uh, add that onto the screen here. I'll also add it down below in my description box. So a big thank you to Lily Silk. Uh, again for working with me on this part of the video. So I am gonna get on with my day. I have to film a different video, so I'm gonna do that now. And actually I'm going out to dinner uh, with my husband tonight because his birthday is next week. So he decided to make um, reservations at the Eiffel Tower restaurant, which is part of the Paris Hotel and Casino. And he loves like pistachio, themed desserts and he also loves souffle and apparently at the eiffel tower restaurant there is a pistachio souffle and so he has been salivating over that idea for months now so finally we're gonna go we're very excited i really hope they have it because you know sometimes restaurants just like swap stuff out constantly um, but i think they have like a lot of different flavors of souffles on the menu like all the time so Hopefully they have the pistachio tonight. In any case, it's a restaurant that we've been wanting to try. So that's what we're doing tonight. But hey, Butters. What's going on, baby? You wanna say hi to your fans? What are you doing in the kitchen? Hmm? Are you looking for scraps? Is that what's going on? So she ran out of treats recently, and I have to be really careful with, you know, the food that I get her. If you guys aren't aware, Butters, uh, really early on had to deal with pancreatitis. So ever since then, the vet um, has always recommended, you know, something very, very low fat in terms of food and treats and all that stuff. So anyway, uh, treats have a lot of fat in them. <laughs> so the only ones that I've been able to find are generally like sweet potato treats. Those are the only ones that have like a really low fat count. Anything with like meat in them or whatever, those always just a lot more fat. Anyway, so I had gotten her some treats from Just Food for Dogs, which is where uh, we get her food and it was a collaboration with we rate dogs i don't know if you guys follow that instagram account but it's so cute um and they had these like dried sweet potato treats so i got like a whole bunch of those we just ran out i went to go reorder some and it was like a limited edition collaboration so they don't have them anymore i was so pissed i was like oh man now i have to like search for more so anyway i just went on to amazon and i ordered these sweet potato chews from crumps naturals and super low fat count, so 0.09%. That's the min, so that's where we want to be at around like 1%. But they're huge. They're like giant, giant pieces. So I have to like break them up. I broke up a bunch for her and like make them into like smaller, but this is even, I feel like kind of big. I also don't want her to choke on it, so maybe I'll leave it like this. Anyway. So got those for her. And then because her stomach is so sensitive, you know, usually when we've had to give her like antibiotics in the past, the vet will also give us like packets of probiotic powder just to kind of throw on her food. Um, but I found these probiotic bites from Zesty Paws for gut health. So I figured we can give her, I think it's just one a day. Yeah, up to 25 pounds, one soft chew a day. So I'm gonna add this into her diet and see if that helps at all because she's actually been farting a lot, <laughs> a lot more lately. She's never been a, an especially farty dog. 
she just has always been had tummy issues here and there she'll you know have loose poop i've talked about this a lot on my channel uh loose poop or you know she had the bout with pancreatitis but she's never really been farty where she's just laying around just just like farting but just recently i want to say over the past two or three months you know her poop has been fine but she's been really gassy so i don't know hopefully this will help i mean you know she needs to fart she's gonna fart but i'm i it, it's just odd because she hasn't always been that way and it's just recent so i thought maybe these wouldn't hurt and this is totally unplanned but am i not just matchy matchy today with all of the orange treats and my orange shirt this by the way is the frankie shop orange shirt i have a shirt similar to this from h m but it's more red it's more of like a tomato red this one is more of like orange so i'm wearing this today i'm just gonna wear this out to dinner i was gonna change and I'm too tired, <laughs> but I'm ready for dinner. I'm really excited. Yeah, my husband like took care of everything, which I feel kind of bad about because it's for his birthday, but he's like, I'll take care of it. I was like, okay. Um, so he's just saying, he's like, are you ready for our special table? And I was like, what special table? He's like, we only have it for an hour and 45 minutes. I'm like, what? So I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what actually is happening tonight. So I guess we'll find out together. How does my makeup look? I think it's okay. I could probably touch up my lip a little bit. I have um, a Clé de Peau Cream Rouge Shine on. It's called Plumeria Apricot. I don't remember the number, but Plumeria Apricot. That's the shade I have on. And then I use that Isom Artistry Palette, the blush palette, and I just use the light orange shade. And then I have a little bit of the um, Artistry Palette like eyeshadow on, just some of the neutral colors just to kind of throw on. And then for base, I've just been using that Makeup Forever HD Skin Palette, that cream contour and highlighting palette. I love it. I love that palette. And I didn't even use any like contour or anything today. I just used it like around my eyes, around my nose, you know, kind of evened out some things. And that's it. I freaking love that palette so much. I'm so, so thankful that they sent that to me. Because like I said, I was going to buy it during the Sephora sale. And I was like, uh, uh. Am I gonna use it? Do I really need it? Blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad they sent it to me because it's, yeah, it is fast becoming one of my favorites. Sorry, we're walking into my filming room. It got really dark there for a second. Um, but I'm gonna sit down and see if I need to touch up anything. So I think maybe I'll add a little bit more blush. This blush is super duper long lasting, this Isom. That's definitely something I've noticed, like playing around with this. So this is the shade that I have on. I don't, you know what, I don't think I need to add any more. I feel like I always overdo it with the blush, so I'm just gonna calm down. Um, but I do wanna add a little bit more lippy, even though this has stayed on quite nicely too. But here's the color I was just talking about, Plumeria Apricot. It is shade number 202. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more, and I think I'll just bring this along and throw it in my bag. Then I've been taking this Refer number 28 brush, it has some older colors in there too. Kind of gross, I should probably wash this. However, I've just been running this along my lip edge and just softening it up a little bit. I don't know, I'm sorry, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the vlog where Benjamin Pucky did my makeup for that Clay de Peau event, um, but we were just both going on and on about how pretty like a blurred lip line is. And then I was like, oh, it's such an Asian trend, you know, that like popsicle lip that started a gazillion years ago. Now it's not quite as uh, drastic as that was, where it was like so bright in the middle and then really faded out. It's really turned into just this kind of like blurred line edge. And it's so pretty. It just makes everything look so soft so there i do look a little bit shiny when i only use this and i don't add any powder so i'm gonna throw on some of this shiseido powder this is the uh, invisible silk loose powder radiance such dry skin i don't normally mind the shine but it's it's kind of a lot since i'm going out here let me take it down a little bit here yeah that's better and this powder is a radiant powder so it's not really like a super flat matte which is nice so I let my hair air dry today and it was looking pretty good but now it's looking really flat now I'm kind of regretting that I didn't blow it dry but I think it's okay unless I'm willing to kind of like gel it back I think this is 
This is what we're stuck with. So we have this incredible view of Bellagio. So when the fountains go off, we'll be able to see that. And hopefully the sun will start setting. We're here early. It, we got a five o'clock seating. <laughs> Do you need to go outside, baby? Hmm? It's a little bit early for breakfast. Hmm? It's a little bit early for breakfast. <laughs> How'd you sleep? How'd you sleep, baby? Hmm? Good? Look at this face. Look at this face. What does it feel like to be the cutest dog in the world? Hmm? What does it feel like? Good morning, everyone. I slept through the night again. I have to share with you, but let me preface this by saying I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. I don't know about any of those things, and you should definitely check with your doctor first, but I'm going to share with you a supplement that I have been taking that I think, I think has been helping me sleep through the night. Now, I've been having problems sleeping through the night. I would say it's been getting worse and worse. I attribute it to perimenopause. I think it's a fairly normal thing that happens. Uh, you know, our hormones are all out of whack, whatever. Um, I'm still on my birth control pill, so I don't think I've gone like way, <laughs> way off the deep end in terms of perimenopause, but I'm on like the lowest dose, and so Anyway, um, so I haven't been sleeping well and I have not been uh, sleeping through the night. I have no problem falling asleep. It started at about 3 a.m. I would start waking up and just just wide awake, not even just kind of like wake up to go to the bathroom and be groggy, just wide awake. <laughs> and then it started getting earlier and earlier and it wasn't like I was going to bed earlier. So I was getting like less and less sleep or just was starting to feel like it was like more and more broken sleep. So anyway, I was like, I have, I have to try something. So I was at Sprouts and they were having like a vitamin sale, which they have often. It's actually upstairs, but I'm gonna pop a picture of it up here. So I was like, let me just try something. And of course I go to the section at Sprouts and there's tons and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, do I want like a powder to put in my drink? Do I just want a capsule? Do I want gummies? I was like, uh, I don't know. So I just picked this one. It, you know, I really could have just closed my eyes and just like pointed at one and just grabbed it. But this was, it was on the top shelf and the, pri the price was like 
kind of in the middle from a lot of the supplements. Some were more expensive, some were cheaper. So I was like, let me just try this one. I took two capsules right before I went to bed four nights ago, slept through the night. I was like, oh wow, I wonder if it's the supplements. And I always thought, you know, these like over-the-counter supplements that they, they would have to take some time to kind of like build up in your system. So I didn't think much of it. I didn't really attribute it to the supplements. And um, like I have been sleeping through the night just randomly. It's usually, I, I don't sleep like through the night two nights in a row. So anyway, the next night, you know, I have the pills upstairs. I took two, went to sleep, slept through the night. I was like, is it the pills? <laughs> I was really like, could it be? And then again, the next night, slept through the night. Last night I took two, slept through the night. I just had to share that with you because I know, um, I know so many of us suffer from this and I I'm sure you guys out there, if you know, maybe you haven't reached perimenopause, this is definitely something <laughs> I feel like no one really mentioned was this uh, sleep disruption. Um, I think we've all heard about the hot flashes and just, you know, waking up or randomly just like, just being drenched in your sweat. That I definitely have heard of. I've heard of, uh, you know, the things that will happen to your skin, you know, the loss of collagen and all of that stuff. And then <laughs> like uh, the lowering of your libido. I'm like, oh, okay, that's all right. You know, okay, I, I can deal with that or whatever. Like. I can prepare myself for that, but I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about, until recently, um, but I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about like, oh, well, you're also just not going to sleep. <laughs> and so when that started happening, I was like, what's going on? I've always been a really good sleeper. Fall asleep really quickly, just like pass out, and then can very easily sleep nine hours straight. And so when it started happening, you know, I was kind of starting to travel a bit and I was like, oh, maybe it's, you know, jet lag or whatever. I just didn't really think much of it and it wasn't happening that often. And then it just started kind of happening like every night and I was like, what is going on? And I think I mentioned it to a friend and she was like, that perimenopause. And I was like, I knew it. I knew it had to be like something. So anyway, I am so happy that it seems like these supplements are what's doing the trick, but you know what? I'm just going to keep taking my two a night and just hope for the best um, because there's just really, I don't want to say there's nothing worse than not getting sleep, but it's bad. You know, not getting, not getting sleep, not only does that raise your cortisol, which I would imagine kind of contributes to the whole, you know, midsection weight gain that you also get, you know, during pet perimenopause and menopause. Um, but you know, I, I haven't been making great food choices. I haven't ma been making like good choices in general. And I know that's from, um, the, the kind of broken sleep. And the, you know, the thing is I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would be able to fall asleep. And thankfully I'm in the position that I make my own schedule. So I could fall back asleep at like four or five in the morning and then wake up at like seven or eight and it's okay. And I would wake up not feeling tired necessarily. I mean, a little out of it, but not tired, but it definitely does something to your psyche. I just, I haven't been as uh, motivated. I haven't been as chipper. Like I'm a pretty happy go lucky kind of person. And I was just kind of, <laughs> kind of poopy all the time. Now that I've had four consecutive nights of sleep, I feel like a different, now it's like I can, I can see the difference. I can feel the difference from when I wasn't I'm like, wow. So anyway, get your sleep, see if you can find some sort of, you know, na natural kind of supplement um, to take. And this is the one that's been working for me. I'll flash it up here again. This is the one that's been working for me. Good luck to all of my sisters out there going through perimenopause, menopause, dealing with uh, these major changes. So we're out taking butters for a walk. And I don't usually vlog myself outside, but it is so beautiful out. You guys know, I'm a winter gal, but I can appreciate a really beautiful spring day. It's probably like 72 degrees out, few clouds in the sky, the birds are chirping. It really is very, very ideal right now. We just got back from our walk and uh, I got an Amazon delivery. I got a new mic. 
I'm really excited for this. Now I, of course, like when I do my sit down videos and I'm sitting in my like little filming closet, I have like the professional lighting and I have like this really kind of nice boom mic. So whatever. So when I do my sit down videos, um, I feel like everything is set up. But when I'm vlogging, when I'm talking to you guys on my vlogging camera, which is just this little, basically like point and shoot camera, um, I know the sound is not great. And I have definitely seen some comments here and there about my sound, whatever. So I'm like, okay, so I like tried, oh, I still have it, but I have to return it. I tried this microphone because it was uh, less expensive than the one I'm, I think I'm gonna end up using. Um, and just the sound maybe was a hair better than just this sound, but it was very, kind of came in and out. It, it was just odd. So anyway, I went ahead and I ordered uh, a much more expensive one but I'm really excited to try it. So right now I have it charging, so the sound may get better halfway through this vlog, um, but I'm also waiting to use this mic to film the rest of this video that I've been filming um, over this weekend. So I'm like, it's like watching grass grow. I'm just waiting for this thing to charge up. Hey, okay, I think my mic set is all charged up. Look how cool this is. So it comes in this box. And then it has um, like the thing, the, <laughs> these are all very technical terms. This is the thing that you attach to the camera. And then these are the mics, or I think they call them the transmitters. And then there's some like adapters there. Let me figure this out and attach it to this camera and see if the sound sounds better. All right, we are testing out the microphone. How do I sound? It looks like it's coming through. I have that piece attached to the camera and there's actually a bar kind of showing like volume levels and stuff. And it was super easy. I just had to turn everything on. It was already paired. I plugged the device into the um, camera. I'm actually gonna play this back now and see how it sounds. Wow, well, I think it sounds pretty good. And I have it clipped down here and it looks like it's picking up the sound really nicely. So. Hey, hey, I just have yet another thing to keep on top of in terms of charging. <laughs> I suck at keeping like my rechargeable devices charged. I'm really bad at that. So uh, yeah, and did I show you? It comes in this really cool case with everything. It's almost like a giant AirPod case where everything is in here and the case itself charges everything and it just flips open. So super cool. Well, thanks for indulging me and <laughs> listening to all of this gadget talk, I know most of you are not interested, but if any of you are out there and you're into vlogging, you're into um, YouTube maybe, you're content creators, this is a really good device. Of course, I'll link it down below, but it's the DJI Wireless Mic. I think that's the full name, literally. I think if you actually, if you do a search for DJI Mic, this will come up. I don't know what that was about. So my husband and I were trying to figure out what to do for dinner tonight. And we had gotten all of these like random meats to make a Sancocho when his family was here, but we actually decided to do a pernil instead. So we have all of <laughs> this, like these different meats, I think, well, we may also be putting in some chicken wings, but we have some bone in chicken thighs, some bone in pork country style ribs. And then we have a ham hock which we actually just boil and uh, kind of create the base with that. And then we also have this, um, here's the name of it. It's a kabocha squash. So we use that. We just kind of cut it into chunks or whatever. And then we have some green plantains, the big, like not very sweet plantains. So my husband likes to shave, like use a peeler and shave um, some of the plantains into, actually he'll probably cut up one and then he'll shave one and he uses the shaved uh, plantain to like make the base even thicker. And then we have some frozen yucca and I think that's basically it. That's going to be our dinner probably for the next, <laughs> for the next three nights. But we have like all of this frozen meat in our freezer and we were like, we need to start actually eating it because we've been eating out a lot and we had stocked up for when his family was here. We just didn't, you know, of course, didn't eat as much as we thought we would. So that is what we're doing for dinner tonight. I'm really excited. It's Thank you.
Hey guys, so I finally showered. <laughs> finally, it's like uh, the afternoon. Anyway, I finally showered and I was getting dressed in my closet and I thought, you know what? This is the perfect time to go through my things. And since I'm kind of doing like a seasonal change in my closet, I just did that lovely haul from Lily Silk. Um, I want to go through my sweaters, definitely my sweaters, maybe my sweatshirts too. I don't know if I have the stomach for that right now, um, but definitely my sweaters, go through them and just donate the sweaters that I haven't worn this past season or, you know, ones that haven't felt that special to me lately or whatever, basically go through and like um, donate the ones that I don't want anymore. As you can see, I've got five shelves of sweaters here. I probably have a couple more hanging up, but I do like to keep them folded so they don't stretch out. Um, so let's go ahead and just start with the bottom shelf here and we'll go from there. Okay, so here I have my Loewe deer slash bunny cardigan. You guys know how much I love this and how often I wear this. So this is definitely a keeper. And then I have this JW Anderson Uniqlo uh, collaboration. This is just like great, comfy, cozy, uh, pullover that has some like sweatshirt detailing here in the front. So really awesome. I actually wear this quite often in the cooler months. So I'm going to hold on to this. And then we have my totem cotton turtleneck sweater. I'm going to hold on to that. I wear that often. And we've got this uh, wool yak mock neck sweater. I love this sweater. So I'm going to hold on to that. I've got my um, Jenny Kane cabled cocoon cardigan. This is the first one that I purchased in the extra large, which I love. I'm gonna hold on to that. And then, let's see. Oh, this is my H&M cotton, like lightweight cardigan. I love this too, especially in this season. So I'm gonna hold on to this. So, so far, we're keeping everything. <laughs> and then we have this sweater from H&M. This one I think I'm gonna donate. This is just a really basic pullover, but I always seem to reach for the JW Anderson Uniqlo one uh, when I'm looking for like a light gray pullover. So I think this can go to a better home. So I'm gonna donate this. And then I've got my Prada mock neck sweater. I'm gonna hold on to that. And then I have my All Saints sweater. This actually goes with a dress. You guys have seen me wear this. It has like Lurex in there, some shiny stuff. Um, so that's a set, so I'm gonna hold on to that. Oh, this is basically the same H&M sweater, but in a cream color. This one I don't feel like I wear that much either. I kind of forgot I had this, even though it was sitting right here. Yeah, I'll donate this too. This can definitely go to a better home. Oh, this is a Sweaty Betty turtleneck. I actually love this sweater, but I never, I never reach for it. This is a size large. Why don't I reach for this? I really like this, but I definitely haven't worn this this past winter, so this is gonna go into the maybe pile. And then I have uh, like a cashmere waffle knit um, hoodie. I'm like, it's a hoodie sweater. And this I'm gonna hold on to because I do wear this quite a bit in the mornings. And then I have this felted like wool it's like almost like a sweatshirt from Vince that I got a gazillion years ago, but I do just love it. So I'm gonna hold on to that. And then let's see, I've got my totem camel sweater, which I love. I'm gonna hold on to that. And then I've got this 100% cashmere cardigan that I got from Nordstrom. It's a little on the flimsy side. I mean, I love it because it was pretty inexpensive, but it pills really, really easily. Um, but I'm gonna hold on to that because it's a lightweight sweater. It's a really good kind of all season sweater. And then I have this Vince cardigan with stripes that I'm gonna hold on to. And then I've got my Jenny Kane black cocoon cashmere cardigan. That's not going anywhere. This was probably my most worn sweater this past season. And then I have this black, it's so hard to show off black, but it's like a mock neck um, wool and yak sweater that I really love. It's the same as this guy. Uh, but in black. And then, let me pull all this down. Let's see. I've got this, oh, this is a James Purse cashmere, like, um, kind of like a turtleneck mock neck, but it has like a drawstring at the neck. It's really, really nice. It's almost like a felted cashmere. This I'm definitely keeping. And then this is my giant dicky that I have from Cos Stores. I'm gonna hold on to this. This is also 100% cashmere. And then I have this halogen cashmere pullover. It's the same as 
the ca this cashmere one. So it's the one from Nordstrom that I was mentioning. It's kind of on the flimsy side. It always pills. I'm always shaving it. So, um, so there's that. But I do love how um, lightweight it is and soft. And then let's see. I've got like an open cardigan from Nordstrom. I have some other open cardigans. I'm gonna hold on to all of these. So all of those are like lighter colored open cardigans. I'm gonna hold on to all of those because I wear those quite often as well. You guys have seen me wear them quite often. Um, so I'm gonna hold on to those. So these are the three sweaters that I am going to donate. That was a maybe, but I'm just gonna go ahead and donate it since I'm really not getting rid of too much. And I do wanna kind of clear these shelves out. And since I didn't do that great of a job <laughs> with my sweaters, I am gonna go through my sweatshirts here, but I'm just gonna speed up this section and just show you what I end uh, tossing. All right, so just two black sweatshirts essentially. So I got this aloe. It's almost like fleece. It's not really a sweatshirt. It's like a fleece. And I love it because it's got a mock neck. It's black. It fits really well. But this fleece is so hot and I, I just can't wear it. I like will wear it. I'll go out and then I have to like strip. Um, and so I never reach for it because it's just like nuclear hot. So I don't bother. Um, and then this black sweatshirt, it, it just gets lost in all of my other black sweatshirts, so I never ever reach for it. And in fact, I forgot I had this, so I'm just gonna toss it. Um, I have a bunch of black sweatshirts, as you guys know, that I wear all the time. So gonna get rid of those two, but that's it. Um, you know, I'm not getting rid of too much, but I do like kind of constantly going through my clothing and I just did a big donation I want to say it was probably at the beginning of like fall winter. I was kind of going through a bunch of stuff. So I'm pretty happy with like the state of my closet. I, I go through my stuff fairly regularly. I don't like holding on to um, clothing just to hold on to it, just to have like a, a quantity. It's too much. It just makes like my closet feel really, really crazy. So I do go through my stuff fairly regularly and I don't, I didn't expect to kind of get rid of much more than I am, but I am still glad to kind of go through take a little inventory of some stuff and like, you know, just kind of like keep on top of it. Um, so I do like doing it like every season change. So I'll probably be doing this again once uh, we go into the fall, but that's it. I should probably check on the Sancocho. I think my husband's on top of it, but he's like working at his computer and he definitely loses track of time. So I'm gonna go down and, and check on the goodies. So I just woke up from a little bit of a nap to the Sancocho being ready. I'm so excited, it smells so good. I really wish you guys could like smell through the screen. Wow, it is perfect. I think this is the best one my husband has ever made. Mm -mm -mm. It's so good. <laughs> 